Greetings, welcome to Wanaheda Church of Christ, Vindu, Namibia. We invite you to join the most powerful message from evangelist Anthony Ngabu from the series Self-Discovery. This sermon is entitled Self-Conflicted. Self-Conflicted. Stay blessed and stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Uh, let's God give God a praise and give God worship. Father, we bless your name. Thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit, your preeminence of our lives today. Thank you, Lord, we are rejoicing. We are rejoicing in your goodness, in your mercy, oh God, in your favor in our lives. Today, as we understand in our second week, oh God, in our second, oh God, word, in our second sermon, God, on self-discovery. Today, God, we look at the conflicts within us, the self-conflicted souls, the battles and the fears that contradicts our faith. Father, we pray that God illuminate our mind, God. God, destroy and Mantle, O oh God, every distraction, O oh God, and interruption. Speak to us by your word and your spirit. Take preeminence, Holy Spirit, in this place. We give you praise, O oh God. Our hearts are open and our souls. We say, speak to us today. Oh, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Take preeminence over every soul, O oh God. Use a God, a man of clay rips, O oh God. A man of weaknesses, O oh God. Let your spirit, God, speak today. We praise you and we honor you. We pray all this, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Today we are in um, Simon Series 2. Today we are looking at um, self-conflict. Or self-conflicted people. Self-conflict is our, our message for today. And uh, last week, of course, we did look at, uh, which was the first important thing about the self-concept and uh, understanding oneself and uh, how you're supposed to be who you are and how you are created, your identity, your image, your self-esteem, your self-value, and all those things were very important to understand because... Um, uh, what we did talk about uh, last week has to bring about understanding today. Because uh, if you miss the first part, which was last week about self-concept, you may not really understand uh, the battles you're fighting. Because uh, I say often, ignorance is equal to death as much as knowledge is equal to life. Knowledge, the Bible says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Uh, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. And uh, many people think uh, prayers are good and fasting is good. But the Bible says my people perish because of lack of knowledge. Because you can fast, you can pray without having a deep understanding of the battles you're fighting. The conflict you are engaging in every day. Uh, it's all in vain. You're, you're fighting... Uh, a meaningless battle but uh so what we are looking at today has to be connected from our previous topic which was a self concept now the lack of self concept often draws it and brings about self conflict so that's what we are looking at today the lack of self concept not understanding self not knowing who you are not knowing your image, your identity, your value, your self-esteem, your self-worthy, uh, it brings a whole lot of self-conflict. Because we had great people that understood themselves, but they still have battles about certain things. Until we had a man, a man by the name of um, Job. Job, though he walked with God and things began to happen in his life, he had a whole lot of, he's a man on earth that had more self-conflict 
and questioned God and and questioned God and 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 argued with God. I see if you really say a man has to be good, a man has to be that. I've done all that, but why are these things happening to me? So you're not going to understand the troubles you go through, the difficult, the challenges, if you do not know who you are. So God has to show Job who God is. He says I am God, and I created you. I know who you are. I know everything about you. And therefore, uh, everything that has happened to you has been orchestrated, has been outlined, and ha- it has been a setup for on for God's glory. And uh, God, he has to understand it. He has to understand God. He has to understand Himself. You know, God began to explain Himself so that. Job could understand who he is in God. Oh, that's heavy right there. So God began to say, I created the lightning. I created the thunders. I created all kind of stuff that you can ever mention. The sea, the mountains, the valleys, and, and all kind of stuff. I love the way David puts it. And David puts it this way. In Psalms 148, he says, Praise He God, all you stars, praise the Lord. The mountains, praise the Lord. The ocean, praise the Lord. Because He is your maker, your creator. The heaven and the earth, all praise God. So God has to explain Himself to Job so that Job find himself in God. So that Job find himself in God. God, because God, when He describes who He is, and if you have been, you have been one of the creation which God has made, you, you need to understand who you are and why it is happening to you. So today we are proceeding, understanding that the lack of self-concept and the self-image brings about a lot of battles. The battles people are fighting today in church, the spiritual battles, the, the physical battles, you know, the financial battles, the, 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 the knowledge and the retreat battles, whole lot of battles people are fighting in their marriages, in their relationship, in their homes, in their careers, in their whole lot of stuff that people are fighting with every day, conflict after conflict that are drawn from most of them from the lack of self-concept. Because if you do not know yourself, people reach to a point of committing suicide. People reach at the point of divorce. People reach at the point of turning from born a man and you want to be like a woman. <laughs> oh, that's a heavy, that's heavy. You are born a man, but you want to be a man. Lack of self concept, self-image, self-identity. So it's a whole lot of battles people are fighting in their genes, in their emotions, in, in their lives, in their mental status, in all areas. Most of them, you're going to apply wrong solutions to the battles you're fighting because you don't understand yourself. Therefore, you do not draw your strength. Your perspective is not good. Your thinking and your attitude concerning the battles that are within you and that are happening to you, they are not good. Therefore, you begin to fight yourself and begin to have wrong solutions to wrong problems. So let's start by also looking back at self-concept. Then we're going to look into our sermon of uh, self-conflicted. We went back again in Genesis chapter 1. Let's read that together, verse 26. This will be more often of our common verse. Genesis chapter 1, 26, it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our own image, in our likeness. Let them rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that moves along the ground. In verse 27, God says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. In verse 28, God said, God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish and all over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Now, and then we're going to read 
couple of verses in in the New Testament. Let's go back to uh, so that when I begin to explain, you have a full picture of what I'm trying to say, and just uh, not draw my whole subject to one verse, but you need to have a detailed information on what God is saying and why God is saying what he's saying. So we are going to Ephesians chapter 4. Actually, we'll read just Ephesians chapter 1. It's a little bit similar to what we read last week, which is Jeremiah chapter 1, where God says, Before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. It's the same kind of saying that Paul writes in the book of Ephesians chapter 1. And these are the words Paul writes to Ephesians chapter 1, and this is what he says. Paul says something profound in Ephesians chapter 1. He says, Praise be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, whom has blessed us in the heaven realm with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the whole world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, in love, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. So praise of his glory and grace, which he has freely given to us in one he loves. Now here, Paul has his writing trying to confirm from the beginning what we also read last week in Jeremiah chapter 1. Uh, our last verse for today before we get into our word is uh, actually about self-conflicted people. This is our main verse for self-conflicted people uh, and self-conflicted life. Uh, just self-conflict, that's what I'm talking about. So this is a verse, that's Matthew's, Matthew's chapter 12, verse from verse 33, and it reads, Make a tree good, and its fruits will be good. Make a tree bad, and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognized by its fruit. You bloody vampire, you blood of vampires, how can you who you are evil say something good? For out of over overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. The good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him. The evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. But I tell you that man will have to give an account on that day of judgment for every, every careless word that they have spoken. For your words will be acquainted unto you, and by your words you will be condemned. Now, brothers and sisters, uh, I want just to uh, get in details with that scripture of Matthew chapter 12 a little bit so that you understand. Now, Jesus was saying, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So often the self-conflicted people is something within them and then they project it out. That's what actually that verse is trying to teach us. The battles you are fighting inside yourself. According to Matthew 12, 33, going downwards, it says, From out of your abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. In other words, the stuff that you have stored up in you, the battles you are fighting inside you, all the evil, all the immoral, all the, all the chaos and the, the contrasting of life, when it is inside you, that is often what is projected outside. So I don't get surprised often when I hear people insult and then turn around and say it was a mistake because you only speak what you have kept out inside. Uh, uh, in my life, I don't often dwell by mistakes. I don't believe mistakes exist. <laughs> uh, that's another whole philosophy right there. And people use uh, uh, a word called it was a mistake, just an excuse. You didn't just do your job well. You, you didn't just put things in order properly. Uh, and then you have messed up somebody's life and somebody's work. And you are going to call it mistake. 
Uh, and somebody, I heard you, somebody will get pregnant and say it was a mistake. Oh, wonderful. Amazing things in life. I just love the youth and, and how they think and how they behave. And how do you go? The process of getting pregnant, it is not a one day thing. It is not a, uh, a thing you just woke up and then bam, I was in the shop and then I found myself pregnant. No, no, no. It's kind of a process to the promise. That's heavy. You don't want to mess up with it. It's process to the promise. Now you reach the promise and you say it was a mistake. Have you forgotten how you get into the process? Anyway, that was just then. I'm sorry. That was uh, not part of uh, the sermon, but just just for free. Just 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 get that for free. But I wanted you to understand this message Jesus is talking about. And he went in details. I wouldn't go in details because of time, but I've explained so many scriptures to you today. I've explained what Jesus was actually trying to say and teach us in this scripture. He taught us a lot. He says, the whole evil comes out of the heart. And then I remember a time back where I explained what the heart is. Now, anthropomorphic term, what am I saying? Actually, God is going to use something that you know and you're familiar with to explain to you what you do not understand. For example, God says he will cover you in Psalms 91 with wings and protect you from all evil. Does that God, does that mean God is a bird? Not really. God is not a bird. He's using what we call anthropomorphic term. He's using words that are at your level just to give you something to grasp of things you do not understand. So when God says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What is the heart? Let me explain to you what a heart is. A heart is a sub- combination of a conscious and a subconscious. That's what the heart is. A heart is a combination of conscious and a subconscious. Was this scripture saying an organ heart which pumps blood? No. Every time you read a verse in the Bible that talks about the heart, it's talking about, you, you hear, out, as a man thinketh in his heart, so you see, now how does the thoughts connect to the heart? Does it mean it has some tube somewhere where the thoughts are running inside and out or where the blood brings in thoughts? No, 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 no. The heart has to deal with your conscious and your subconscious. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. In other words, you can say as a man thinketh in his conscious and the subconscious, so is he. I've explained this in a psychological term. A man is controlled 90% by subconscious and 10 percent by the conscious so when the bible says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks a man a self-conflicted man now listen and listen carefully a self-conflicted man is a man that has kept up issues and issues and issues evil and evil and evil and is storing up these things and storing up these things and they begin to fight inside each other and he can't handle it anymore he can't handle it anymore planning to commit suicide he's planning to divorce he's planning to kill his wife he's planning to kill his girlfriend he has kept all the evil in his heart and the society has not given a platform a man to expose his fears and his battles is fighting within so brothers and sisters you need to grasp this concept about jesus saying these words this man that has stored up evil in him there's nothing good that can come out of him a man that stores up good in him those are the battles we fight Society is telling you, stored up your mother, your society, your home, stored up some things in you. And here God comes, is teaching you his word. Those things begin to fight each other. Your faith and your fears, experience and expectation, your culture and, 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 and the, the religiosity that comes with it. And all kind of these things, the carnality and all these things are in your subconscious and your conscious, which the Bible refers to the heart. And they're fighting each other. I want you to understand this. Now, brothers and sisters in the Lord, I want you to understand this today. That uh, self-conflict is often drawn from, it's actually the lack of self-concept. Most of the battles we first, we first them with the lack of self-concept. Now, self-conflict 
It's in our area of our daily battles. We will fight in our daily lives, in decision, in choices, in the food we eat, in the places we go to, in a whole lot of stuff. I've seen people, for example, you find your weighted partner and after marriage you discover and realize, oh, what a battle I chose for myself. Or what a self-conflicted life I chose. And a whole lot of stuff. And in our lives today, we engage every day in battles. Life is a battle by itself. And somebody has to be a warrior to fight. Every day has its own battles. Every day has its own challenges. Everyone has challenges. Everyone has battles. Everybody got first some challenges in their lives. But some Challenges are different. A challenge and a battle, a conflict that has been brought by an opponent, you will have tools to prepare. You will have stuff to fight with and all the stuff, the guns and all, all the pistols, you put them in place in order to fight the battle your enemy is bringing up to you. But the challenge in our lives today and in this generation is what we call self-conflicted people. Because self-conflicted people, John Maxwell puts it this way in his writing, in the book called Winning with People. He says, hurting people hurt people and are hurt by others. Hurting people hurt people and are hurt by others. In other words, I would put this way, self-conflicted people cause conflict in the people's lives. Self-conflicted people cause conflict in people's lives because when you're wounded inside anything somebody is going to do outside will have an impact in your life and they react badly so hating people hurt people and they're hurt by others self-conflicted people cause conflict often before the battles begin People go through challenges within themselves, challenges of doubt, challenges of insecurities, challenges to discover who they are in God. Why were they here? Why did I get married? Why did I find myself here? What happens to me? Everything is not going against me. Why this? Why that? Self-conflicted people often cause conflict. They have battles within and they often project those battles in others. It's like the psychologists, they would put this way. We often see in others what is in us. We often see in others what is in us. An evil man often sees evil in all people. Every time, even when you talk to him, you talk to her, she's always negative. Negative people, all in all situations, they often see negative. In every area, they see negative. They never see positive because it's drawn from the previous talk where we said self-concept determines your perception, your attitude, and everything that happens to you. Self-concept. So the lack of it brings about self-conflicted people. They begin to have battles within themselves. You ask them one question, honey, what are we hearing today? He screams out and shouts at you insult you. You are not a man. You didn't buy food in the house. They have certain battles in their lives that they are facing. It's all the way also the vice versa when a man is going through conflict. Now culturally, listen to this. Culturally we have been mentored and uh, often men are mentored to fight battles within battles within. They fight battles in their mind, in themselves. They're being hurt and they keep on saying, I'm good. I'll be fine. I'm, I'm going somewhere. I'll be better. It's okay. Everything is all right. But they're fighting battles and battles. When you read the statistics worldwide or in Namibia itself, you will find out that the most people that commit suicide, it's men. Why? Because they have self battles, self-conflicted issues that they cannot talk to and the society has not given us a permission to express our feelings, express 
our battles, express our conflict. But the day you discover a man is hanging on a tree, a man takes a gun and shoots himself, a man is going through battles because the society has not given a man a platform on how to express their issues. Self-conflicted people. We are dealing with Namibia, a generation. We're dealing with the issue of gender-based violence, killing, passion killing, and murdering, and baby dumping, and all kind of stuff. All these are coming by the lack of self-concept and the self-conflicted people. Because the self-conflicted people are insecure. They are not sure of themselves. They are not sure of their performances. They are not sure of their faith. They are not sure of their identity. They have battles after battles after battles. Therefore, they become so insecure. They are not sure of themselves. I'll give you a couple of points. Number one. Self-conflicted people have battles between faith and fear. Faith and fear. It's a battle that is constantly going in a Christian brother, in a Christian sister, in, in, a, in people from all over the world. Most of them, they're going through the battle of faith against fear and fear against faith. It's a battle in them. They are afraid on one thing and on the other side, God says, have faith in me. They are afraid of this. They are afraid of that. On the other hand, somebody says, have faith in God. Therefore, they begin to see their battles and their conflict and, and all this is fighting in their spirit, in their lives. And they continue to have a battle between their faith and their fear. And they don't know which one is which and which one am I taking. Praise be to God. But God says, do not fear. Have faith in God. He will take through the, though you walk through the valley of shadow of death, believe in God. Believe in God. Many your faith and exalt diminish your fear and exalt your faith exalt your faith and diminish your fear you gotta kill something in order to raise something oh glory be to God you gotta kill some weaknesses in you you gotta kill some fears in you step them and say I know I'm feeling this I'm feeling some fears I'm feeling some battles but I'm still believing in God I'm still gonna follow what God says it's not about what is after me. It's not about what is before me, but it's what is within me. Oh, praise be to God. I have some battles in me. My fear and my faith, they constantly fight each other and I do not know which way to take. So those are battles that are in people. So often they begin to project these battles in people's lives. It's like a torch. A human being having a torch and it's dark at night and you project it on the other side. You'll be able to see on the other side, the person will be in the light and you'll be in the dark. And often the accusing brethren and the accusing stuff, the accusing mind, this is what normally happens. You begin to accuse people of what is going on in your life. You begin to point people, blame people, insult people, show people, say to people what is happening to you. And you do not realize it and you do not acknowledge it. So you're actually projecting what is inside you. You're actually projecting what is happening to you. So it's very, very profound. That is the battle people are fighting today. The battle between fears and faith. Self-conflict in their lives. Self-conflict. So when they have fears, rather than faith, they begin to doubt their friends, doubt their husbands, doubt God, doubt everyone else. They begin to question everyone else. They begin to question God and they begin to doubt God, doubt their husbands, doubt their pastors, doubt everybody else because there is a battle inside them. They can't handle it, but they begin to doubt people and be afraid of what's going to happen to them. So that's what happens. Now you can also call it experience and expectation. Like in this case, Joseph was a good man. Joseph was a good man. 
He worshipped God. He walked in the integrity. He did everything according to the righteousness of God. Now, he did not and he does not expect to go through some troubles. Some people worship God and, and everything is going against their belief and against their faith. I'm expected to do this and I'm doing it, but my experience apart from my experience. So expectations and experience. I was expecting I'm a Christian to get a job, to get a good wife by this time, but my experience is the opposite. So they have expectation that always inside them they conflict with their experience. The through Hebrew boys, the expectation in God, God will deliver us. And then the experience is that the God will throw in fire. So sometimes the battles we face self-conflicted. Self-conflict is the experience and the expectation they do not match. They have a battles, people, the spiritual in me and the carnality they are fighting. One says, I now I want to get out. I want to be me. I want to rule. I want to feel and feed everything I'm feeling. That's a carnality. He says, you should have, Tony, everything you need to have. You need to have a good sex, have it. You need to have a good man, have it. You need to have a good drink, have it. Oh, don't care about diet and what people say. Ah, you need to have everything. The carnality man wants his position and the spiritual man says I am the head and not beneath I'm supposed to be controlling of your life I'm supposed to be the one to be in charge because I'm internal your flesh will die your carnality will die but I'll live forever so this battle continues year after year day after day month after month I'm fighting in me I'm fighting in me. Don't just see me dressing a suit. Don't just see me dressing a skirt. I'm looking good on outward, but I've self-conflict in my spirit. I'm speaking to somebody that's going through some style that your neighbor you are seated to, your brother at work, your sister at work, somebody at church, your pastor doesn't understand. I'm facing through some difficult. Pastor, I believe I have faith, but my fears are fighting me. I have expectation in God, but my experience is drawing me in the dark. I know my spiritual has to cling in God, but my carnality wants to have his part. Which one should be here? Which one will stand? So, how do I face reality? Who do I listen to? My self conflicted battles. And you keep on fighting and fighting and fighting. Others people have given up on life. Others they have turned back on God. Others have turned back on their dreams. Others have turned back on ever everything that I ever have desired in their lives. Others have done have turned back in their spirituality in pursuing righteousness because of the self-conflicted battle. My spiritual and my carnality. One side I want to be married, and the other side I want to live a single life. I am conflicted inside me. Which one do I take? Lord, help me. Many people are conflicted, <laughs> claiming to be married, want to be married, claiming to be single. You want to have to be a husband, but you still want to be a playboy. Conflict. But the day you discover who you are in God, your path and your purpose, God who direct you. The Bible says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Your thoughts are not God's thoughts. Your ways are not God's ways. My brother, my sister, today begin to believe in God. Believe in God. 
Do not be conformed and be defined by what you see. God says in the book of Isaiah, he says, though you walk through the waters, they shall not swallow you. I shall be by your side. Though you walk and step in fire, I shall be there as a consuming fire. Ah, though you are thrown in the pit of the lions, I will appear in your midst and call myself the lion of Judah. I shall be your God. Do not dismay. Do not fear and do not be afraid. Be strong and be courageous. Be strong and be courageous. God will take you by the right hand and lead you in the right path. So then, God understands what you're going through. The people may not understand your attitude today. And the battles you're fighting. Your brothers and your sisters may not understand The stuffs you're struggling with. But I believe me, my brother. My sister, I tell you. The self-conflict you're having. God understands. If you can go back to him. And then look into the manuscript. Look at the script God has designed you. And read those lines. And walk in that plan. God will vindicate you. You will only be able to defeat the self-conflicted battles when you go back to the self-concept and self-image. Now, as I'm closing, my brother, I'll say these important points. Self-conflicted people cause conflicts. They cause battles. They cause things. We have seen marriage split, evil, and all that started by one man. I've seen churches that were great, powerful people. Split and division came in because the devil used one man who was self-conflicted. I can see some Judas Cariot in some places. There is a Judas Cariot the devil is sending in every place to bring about self-doubt, self-conflicted people and bring them down and cause them to cause conflict, to cause division in churches, in marriages, in places, in workplaces places and careers in your life begin to be careful and pray for protection and pray for guidance because the devil and the demons they are sending some Judas Cariot that are self conflicted they don't know their self concept they don't know their self value they want to evaluate themselves by money evaluate themselves by people evaluate by themselves by arranging themselves being associated by a certain kind of group of people to feel worthy, valued. They want to accumulate all accolades, degrees and all this stuff just to feel that they're important. But God says, I don't care. In heaven, your papers doesn't matter. I want you to understand your self-concept. The battles you're fighting is because you've missed my image. So, the battles you're fighting in your church, in your life, and everywhere where you are, In your marriage, it always starts with one man. It always starts with one woman. And those people, today we call them the self-conflicted people. Self-conflicted people cause conflict. Self-divided people cause division. A man that is not united with his mind his soul and his spirit, they no longer speak the same language, can cause division. Because his flesh and his carnality has gone astray and his mind does not comprehend. And his spirit and his soul, they are no longer power in unity, speaking the same language. He is divided within himself. I don't know whether some of you have gone through what I've gone through. 
I can't touch a book. I can't read. I can't concentrate. I'm divided within myself. And I know that I know that I know there's a problem inside my spirit. I can't hold it. I can't touch it. I don't know what it is. But my brother, somebody told me, I say your spirit and your mind and your soul, they are disconnected. They no longer speak the same language. One plus one plus one equals one, which is Trinity. I pray to you today that you understand the mathematics of heaven, that you understand the battles you're going through, that you just need one plus one plus one equals Trinity equals one. You need God in your life. You need God. Many people have failed in their lives because they were conflicted people. Today, kneel down before God and pray. Seek God's first. Seek God's favor. Seek God's approval. And tell God your doubts, your fears, your battles of faith and fear, experience and expectation, your carnality and your spirituality, the human you and the spiritual you fighting. Fight and fight before God. And tell people, seek help today. If there's anybody listening to me today, you have heard my sound of my voice. You are going through, maybe your wife doesn't know. Your fiancé, your pastor, or any human being doesn't know what you're going through. Today, before the devil uses what you're having, to destroy you and those around you. Listen this carefully. Before the devil uses your struggles to destroy you and the people around you, your family, your friends and your church, the self-conflict you're having. Today I beg you, my brother. I beg you, my sister. Come before God. Seek a man of God. Seek counseling. Seek help. Kneel before the God of heaven and death and say, God, forgive me for I am lost. I need your help. Let God bring peace and give you solution before you become self-destructive and destroy those around you, your family, your children, your husband and your wife and your church, your family, your extended family. I beg you today, I say, seek God. Let's pray. Thank you. May God bless you. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us all now and forevermore. May you richly dwell in the house of God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Thank you so much. Hope you've been blessed by the word of God on the sermon series self-discovery. And this one was self-conflicted people and hope you have enjoyed. Please join us on Facebook, Wanaheda Church of Christ, Vinduk, Namibia, or contact us on 081 or email us at wanaheadachurch at gmail.com. Thank you. Stay blessed and stay tuned.